Dr. Evans, millions of people, especially people over 65, suffer from joint discomfort. Could you tell us what's going on structurally with this condition? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the joint is, uh, depending on which joint you're talking about, but mm -hmm. actually this applies to all joints. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very complex structure consisting of ligaments, tendons, muscles, uh, synovial fluid, uh, which is the lubrication fluid that keeps these, uh, the bones from uh, uh, coming in contact with okay. one another. Uh, cartilage and... Cartilage is involved, absolutely, and so... Uh, Connective tissue? Yes, okay. yes, absolutely, and so these are uh, the various components that... That's a lot of ingredients to keep a, a joint <laughs> going. <you know. laughs> yes, I should say so, and this is why the potential for, uh, for damage um, is, is so great, and mm. because it's a very complicated uh, uh, structure. And so, uh, depending on the uh, cause of this, and there can be m many causes of joint pain, it's not just the uh, commonly uh, uh, considered uh, causes such as the uh, osteoarthritis or mm -hmm. osteo-rheumatoid uh, arthritis. There's many other conditions which could cause joint pain, including um, uh, being overweight, for example, oh. puts a lot of stress on the various sure, uh, joints. Sure, that makes sense. Um, people that suffer sports injuries, people that have uh, occupations where they have repetitive motion. Mm -hmm. um, there could be autoimmune causes for it. You know, your body has an allergic reaction. And mm -hmm. So that could be a cause of joint pain. So it's not just wear and tear? Wear and tear through aging can cause joint pain. So there's a whole range of causes, uh, potential causes for joint pain. Aging can cause this, but at the same time, a young person who's overweight could be experiencing joint discomfort, or or someone, an athlete, who's overextending their their uh, joints. Absolutely, and even people that that go to the gym and exercise, if they're not doing their strength training properly, if mm -hmm. they're if they're not using the correct form, this could lead to joint pain. And so, people that exercise too much. Um, for example, you'll see, you know, for example, baseball pitchers. You don't think that these pitchers can pitch every day. They have to give their joints the proper rest. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they only pitch every, every few days. But basically joint pain, the point is, is joint pain can emanate from a whole variety of different causes. It's not simply just wear and tear. And what eventually happens is that you have uh, inflammation. Mm -hmm. and so inflammation will, um, will lead to, if it's severe enough, will lead to the joint pain. And so structurally you're having damage to the cartilage and uh, if it, in worst cases the synovial fluid becomes decreased, which is the lubricating fluid in the right. joint. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would become decreased if you're, as, for example, if you're not getting enough fluids, if you're, if you're chronically dehydrated, synovial fluid will be, will be decreased. And the worst case is when, when you have such a deterioration of the joint where you have bone on bone. Mm, and that, that's, that's, heard, that's yes. the worst case scenario. Bone on bone. Yes. So this inflammation occurs. Is that what destroys the synovial fluid? That's, uh, that leads to it, yes. That because, does? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. What about toxins in the environment and toxins in our food? Do they play a role? Well, they can contribute to perhaps an autoimmune uh, reaction, uh, but uh, typically I'm not aware of any specific studies that show, you know, uh, an environmental toxin will lead mm. to, to joint pain. Yeah. How can we control that? I mean, if, just, if you're just aging, like I said, 65 and older people, millions of people are suffering from that. Yeah, well, it sounds like it might be contraindicated, but clearly to prevent it is to follow an anti inflammatory diet, so to take in uh, nutrients which have anti-inflammatory effects, mm -hmm. but in combination with that, certainly an exercise regimen. And the third thing is uh, there's certain nutritional supplements, and sort of a three-prong approach, uh, an exercise routine, mm -hmm. uh, an anti-inflammatory diet, and supplementation with, uh, with a nutrient. Uh, it's a combination of nutrients that are uh, designed to support uh, joint health. Okay, and then you say there's also the autoimmune factor. Yes. And is that the osteoarthritis? That, we're that would be the rheumatoid arthritis. The rheumatoid arthritis. With, with your, that your body reacts to some sort of uh, uh, an antigen mm -hmm. that creates this immune response. And so you have a, uh, a chronic uh, reaction to it that mm -hmm. will eventually lead to a deterioration of the joint, rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, but yeah. the osteoarthritis is the 
the wear and tear syndrome. Yes, absolutely, and that's the more common form. Yes. And that's the bone on bone. <clears throat> yes, and it's worst case scenario, and I think there's approximately 30 million Americans that suffer from osteoarthritis. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Evans. Okay, certainly.